So welcome everybody to the Introduction to Cycle Touring um, session. Um, it's really nice to see so many of you sign up for this. Um, we, we make sure, we really pride ourselves on the festival being open to everybody and really as inclusive as possible. It's not all about people who want to go off and um, cycle around the world or people who've got heaps of experience. Like, And actually we found year after year that a lot of people who come to the festival haven't done much touring at all or sometimes haven't done any touring at all and they're really coming to the event to, to learn what it's all about and learn how to get started. And um, Caitlin and some of her other buddies from Broken Spoke Bike Co-op in Oxford have um, done a session for us at previous events, which has been absolutely brilliant um, at getting people feeling a bit more confident about taking the plunge for the first time. So we're really delighted that Caitlin and Inish from Broken Spoke have joined us today um, to do a, a virtual version of something they've um, done in the past for us. I think that's all I've got to say for now. Uh, enjoy the session and over to Steve and Inish, uh, Caitlin and Inish, I was reading the chat, <laughs> I was reading the chat box, I was like Steve Long, over to Steve Long, uh, Caitlin and Inish, go for it. Thanks Laura and thanks very much for inviting us to um, chat with everyone today. Um, it's yeah we've done our best to essentially take what usually we have like stuff everywhere and we have trying to have an interactive session where people are walking around the tent and chatting to each other and sharing their experiences so we've translated that to a web webinar which is essentially me a, a conversation between me and Anesh and we're going to try and um, encourage you to um, join in as much as you can in the chat and Q&A and um, so we're gonna be um, um, essentially answering some questions that for that we've both kind of um, uh, thought would be useful. And um, so if you've got a pen and paper, we think one of the ways that you might find this session helpful is to sort of reflect on the questions um, alongside us. Um, and then if anything comes up for you, put it in the chat. And if you have a specific Q&A um, question, put it in the Q&A and we'll, we'll try and answer it. Or someone in the chat might have an, an answer to it. Um, so maybe, Ines, do you want to just introduce yourself? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, we're both from Broken Spoke Bike Co-op, um, which is a little community bike project in Oxford. Um, in non-COVID times, we run a community DIY workshop where you can come and learn how to fix your own bike. Uh, we run public mechanics courses, bike ability cycle training, uh, and a monthly women in trans mechanic mechanics evening alongside lots of other events. Um, we So yeah, well, while we're introducing ourselves, um, I see lots of you have done it already, but if you just put your name and where you're from in the chat box um and so we have like there's a lot of you but it'd be nice for us to get a bit of an idea of of who's in the room with us um because we can't see any of your faces sadly um yeah so i i grew up in oxford and i've always enjoyed riding my bike and it's like to school and to work and always when i was younger i used to get really jealous of people going on like longer rides and and going on adventures with their bikes and i like was always craving adventure um and I never really felt able to I never kind of felt confident enough to get on my bike and do that until I discovered Broken Spoke actually um and came on one of the mechanics courses to and and just took the plunge really um how about you Caitlin how um do you want to get the instruction yeah sure so um I'm uh, uh Caitlin and um I, uh, similarly, I kind of, well, I grew up in a house where there were kind of bikes, every, uh, not everywhere, but like um, my dad and my brother in particular did a lot of cycling. And there was always this idea that we would go on a cycle tour, but actually we never did that. And we did do lots of other fun kind of things around, mainly around like the Lake District and stuff near where we, where we lived, but we didn't actually take a plunge and go on a cycle tour and so it kind of been this thing where I'd always wanted to do it and then um, it was actually sort of after a bereavement and I was having a bit of a tough time and I was kind of trying to sort of rediscover myself a bit and um, some friends of mine suggested going on a um, on a cycle tour as a way to do that um, and so um, that was kind of what 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 um yeah but I suppose like pushed me into it really because I thought well what have I got to lose I might as well try um and 
yeah, so um, that was how I ended up going on my first um, cycle tour. And similarly to Anesh, um, actually Broken's book was really important for helping me do that because I really thought that it was something I wouldn't be able to do. Um, and so we kind of, that brings us into the polls. And I wonder if Laura, we've got a few questions we'd just like to ask you all to see if we can, um, Gage, who's in the virtual room. Laura, can you make the polls go live? We've got one, the first question. Perfect. There we are. So how experienced are you? And how nervous do you feel about touring? And then they should come back. Can you show them when? Yeah, I'll show them. The, we're still, people are still voting. Um, almost everyone's done it now. So just give another 10 seconds or so. Thanks, Laura. And then hopefully the results will be shown on screen in five seconds time. I'm going to end the poll now. Hopefully we've all had time to vote. So can, can you see those results? Yes, perfect. So great, okay. 29% complete newbie, 49% some experienced, 22% experienced. How nervous do you feel? Very nervous, 8%, a bit nervous, 56%, and not nervous at all, 36%. Well, so yeah. this is like, everyone is a little bit nervous, right? Everyone, I mean, there's a few people who are not nervous at all, but there's definitely a whole bunch of people in the room who have got some fears and a couple of worries about getting started. Um, and that's exactly what we're gonna chat about um, for the next. So, um, so Inesh, um, when you um, first started cycle, cycle touring, what were you um, most nervous about? The first cycle tour I went on um, was a ride to Amsterdam with a friend, and I I hadn't I hadn't done any touring before. I hadn't really gone on any longer rides than riding the kind of ten minutes to school and back. Um, and I hadn't really thought about it much. A friend, a friend asked me if I wanted to come with her and I just said, yeah. And it, it kind of, at, at that point, I, I, my head wasn't filled with worries. I was, I was mostly just excited. Um, but a couple of the big standout things that, that did make me hesitate and when we were planning it and thinking about what, what we might do, primarily I was, I was terrified about getting lost. Um, mm. I was like, oh God, we've got to have, have our maps ready and, and know where we're going to go. And, and I don't, what if I don't have the right map or I get lost? Um, did you have similar experience? Yeah, I was really, really worried about navigating. Actually, I had done, I didn't have any, I didn't, um, it feels like it was almost pre, maybe it was pre smartphone, actually, I can't really remember. But I didn't, I know, I do remember using Google Maps for stuff. But um, yeah, I was really, really worried about like choosing which roads to go on, because I was worried, I was a bit worried about traffic. Um, and um, I, uh, I had set myself this like destination of I want to I'm going to cycle to the end of France I'm going to cycle across France as my as my first place and um but the the, the most the thing I was most nervous about to begin with was actually like how do I choose where to go which roads to go on and um how do I like not run out of battery all those kind of like didn't I didn't want to just rely on a phone I was worried about taking loads and loads of paper maps um and um, so, I, and I, I didn't have a way to charge my phone, like a battery pack. Um, but uh, what, so what I actually did to start, start um, to get started was I had an, uh, like an AA book of um, uh, the UK and it was like a kind of A5 size. Um, and um, it, uh, and essentially I just looked at the color of the roads and looked between here and where my ferry terminal was and then mapped out a route on essentially the yellow or white roads. Um, yeah. And I don't know if in, in the chat, if you want to add how you started navigating, like what was the first thing you did? Were you really nervous about it? Um, did you use paper maps? 
did you buy a battery pack? one of the things that I, I I did when I first started was was once we'd like we'd done that we'd kind of found our our roads that we wanted to aim for and then we spent so much time on Google Street View trying to navigate it, basically doing the tour, but on Google Street View and working out which roads looked looked doable and, and which weren't. weren't. Um, that's kind of how I thought about it at the beginning was, was just using Google Street View and Google Satellite to kind of see. I was, I was worried about going on big roads. Yeah. Um, I like, there's a lot of people in the chat as well saying paper maps, paper, Sustrans maps. Um, doing it pre-smartphones yeah. and not having the battery anxiety. And I think in general, I found that um, having, um, I grew to like really find comfort in my paper map and I'd like write down what I'd done at the end of the day and follow the thing on, on the map. So um, one, one of the uh, things that really helped me was actually having paper maps. I think that there, there are definitely some practicalities around that um, if you're doing a really, really big cycle tour. But in terms of getting started and getting used to navigating, being able to like see the whole area that you're in and like locate, you know, even just thinking in terms of the compass points and stuff like that. I found that um, really helpful. Yeah, someone said the Michelin maps are brilliant as they highlight the scenic roads in green. I don't know if anybody else has found that, but that's really, really- I've never used that. But... Oh, they're really good. Yeah, they have like the, the, nice, the, the nice roads, either side of the road, it's just shaded in green. So you can start to picture, which is gonna be the really scenic route between, you know, Oxford and Banbury, for example, that based on- great. That. Yes, and also waterproof maps. So like maps, navigating, um, essentially for getting started, my, the, the way that I managed to do that was by trying to not get anxious about phones and apps and Garmin's and stuff. Yeah. There's some great sessions with Kamut, who I'm sure would be challenging a lot of this and saying that there's some brilliant apps to help, um, which is also true. Like now, now there are a lot of apps out there helping you find routes. Um, so in terms of, so once you had discovered Google, the combination of satellite and street view worked for you, um, what, what were the other things that um, you were scared about? You've worked out how to stop getting lost or, you know, how to choose where to Try go. Try to not get lost. Try to not get lost. Um, uh, yeah. What was the next thing or one of the other things for you? So, I guess the next thing for me was about getting a punch and small mechanical issues. I I like UK and I I had grown up around bikes um, all the time, but I was like heavily reliant on my local bike shop, and I I really yeah I, I didn't have that confidence of even small things of how to repair a puncture um, and. I thought, right, okay, if I'm going to do this, I, there's no way I can not know how to repair a puncture. Um, and that's, that's when I found Broken Spoke, actually. Um, I was looking for mechanics courses around, um, and I'd heard of Beryl's Nights, um, which is our monthly women in trans session at the workshop, um, and had bumped into a few people who had been to Broken Spoke and had said how friendly it was. Um, and that was that was definitely my next step was was right um i was like right yeah i, I need a little bit of mechanical knowledge um, and went on a mechanics course at broken spoke um you did the same right yeah yeah so that was actually similarly i was really really scared partly because my dad had done most of the sort of bike fixing i think that's quite a kind of classic experience for a lot of people is that they're um uh their bikes are fixed by other people um, and even though they're like wonderfully simple machines in many ways. Um, they sort of seem like, I, you know, it just felt like this magic thing. How does it keep going? What does that mean? What does that sound mean? Oh my God, what happens if this falls off? Um, and I was, yeah, so I um, went on an introductory mechanics course and, um, uh, and we were gonna share some resources at the end, but essentially I'm pretty sure that, um, a lot of um, uh, people on the call will be fairly close to some kind of 
community cycling project where the aim of the of the project is that you can learn how to do stuff yourself. Um, and um, so in all of the kind of major cities in the UK, there's some version um, or a lot of them, there's some version of a community bike project. So I'd really encourage you to um, have a look and see um, uh, if there's any bike projects close to you. And I don't know if any of you in the chat want to say about if you know if there's a bike project close to you or some kind of introductory mechanics course. Um, yeah, someone's just mentioned London Bike Kitchen. London Bike Kitchen is brilliant, yes. And they're actually, at the moment, they're running online. They've got an online mechanics course library, so you can sign up for some mechanics courses with them. Um, and the, I mean, the other thing is also YouTube. There is a wealth of resources on YouTube about how to fix stuff. Um, so I think the main the main thing is is to um, accept that you will get a puncture, and that rather than trying to deny the reality of that situation, like you can definitely invest in good puncture proof tires to try and reduce that happening. But then one of the problems is is when it happens, it's much harder to fix it because the tires tend to be much stiffer. So it really is like practice, um, and I think practice taking have a have a look see if you can see a mechanics course online um, and practice taking your tire on and off practice taking your inner tube in and out um, and do it at home or with some friends if you're in a in a bubble or um oh yeah there's some really Someone, great someone's just put in the chat um when you break down the adventure starts and i could not <laughs> agree more i think that's that's when you know you're on a real adventure is that when you when things start to go wrong and 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 that that's yeah when you start to work out how to solve them um and you start to feel really self-sufficient and that's what I, I love about cycle touring um is is the self-sufficiency yeah. of of just trying to budge things and trying to work out how to fix it yourself um wow yeah there's loads of really great um projects coming up in the chat so um uh yeah I think that's a key one is that um uh, the other the other thing that I suppose through experience is um, most problems do feel fixable like you can like you usually you just need to get yourself you know if something really terrible has happened you just kind of need to get to the next town you know it doesn't you don't need it to be perfect you just need it to be rideable so even if you can't pump your tire up enough or any of that kind of stuff as long as you can like get to the next place someone will be able to fix you help help you fix it so I think that's one thing is like um uh like trusting that that you know it will become good <laughs> and that someone will help yeah, you that, a little bit of knowledge goes a long Dominic way put that in the chat of um of Dominic said oh I, I find I'm always quite anxious before setting off and trying to pl over plan and overthink routes mm. but once underway the focus comes back to the road and and the day ahead and I think that's right like there's there's always like things that you might be nervous about and like things that you can prepare for but in the end there's there's always gonna be things you can't prepare for and, and once you're out there you're you're on an adventure and you're just having fun um or trying to have fun should we maybe um what I would be really love to hear is is what people because we've talked a little bit about what people are scared about and like what fears there were and what we were worried about but maybe it'd be great to hear from people in the chat of of why you wanted to start cycle touring and like focus a bit more on those like excitements. Um. Yeah, um, it, one of the um, one of the other things that I thought wanted to just bring up as well was um, uh, I had this real uh, worry about wild camping and where to stay because um, I know there's lots of different ways of. Um, uh, of doing cycle touring, you know, you can um, try and link up bed and breakfasts or different uh, youth hostels or stay in different um, hotels, loads of different ways to do it. I wanted to take my camping gear so that um, I didn't get stranded somewhere and have nowhere to stay. Um, and, but one of the things that I was really, really worried about with doing that was, um, actually then just wild camping and especially um starting in um England where um and southeast England as well where I felt a bit nervous about trespassing um I don't know if that resonates for you as well Inesh um totally. 
I was really, really like nervous to the point of being like, how am I going to sleep? And like setting up my tent, finding a place, setting up my tent and then lying in my tent and being like, okay, now I'm going to sleep now. And, and it taking ages for me to actually um, uh, fall asleep. Um, and there's yeah, some- I, I've had like a really mixed experience of that, of like on, on being on some tours, cycle, wild camping and the first couple of times being this was this was in Italy and I was like equally wild camping is like really a lot of people didn't didn't recommend it and I was very nervous about it but we didn't have a whole lot of options um so I I was definitely worried about the trespassing thing um and and yeah one night we kind of we we pitched up where we thought we were safe and we thought we were comfortable and we're like right okay and then it got to it and we lay down in bed and was like oh god how are we gonna sleep what if someone comes and finds us um but I, I've had equally the other experience of like being really comfortable out on wild camping of of like realizing no I'm I'm in the middle of nowhere and and this is like the most wonderful thing um, so how do you choose a spot so one of the things that I found really helpful is how do you choose a spot to wild camp like where what do you look for um to me I think I uh, so there's kind of a a bit of a balance to strike of being um I guess what the first thought that comes to mind for me is is you want to be close to towns so that you're like close by people if anything goes wrong um but then kind of from experience I I think the opposite is true you want to get out of town as much as possible um and be out out in the middle of nowhere and I think so like shelter is a really good one so you want to kind of look always look look out for hedges um and places to be a bit more sheltered from from the weather but also from from other things and like um what, what, what would you think about if you're trying yeah, to find spot? there's some interesting things in the chat actually which uh, this is a really great tip um of uh churchyards are often interesting places because they often have mains water available which is so true if you need to fill your water bottle up or you're looking for somewhere to camp a church if you see a church marked on a map that can be a really great place so i suppose so the, the the rhythm that i have when i'm when i'm while camping is that i try to make sure i fill my water up at the nearest kind of place to where i think i might camp I usually look on the map and see if there's like if I'm between towns or if there's something like you know a golf course or some greenery or a woods or something like that and then I essentially cycle to that bit and then try and find somewhere that's like tucked out of view um and I've now found that generally following that thing of like looking for like the edge of town where there's some green space marked on the map and then and going there and then and seeing um uh, leaving like I try and uh, not turn up um when it's dark um, and leave a bit of time um to to then just camp up someone in the chat said ask a farmer and my experience is that when I have asked people and I've seen people to ask them um and say oh can I camp um, I'm going to be gone in the morning. I'm only staying overnight. I won't light a fire. I won't take it, leave any litter. As soon as you frame it as in like, I'm a, I'm a responsible camper. I'm not going to be here a long time. These are the things you're worried about. Um, I've never, ever had anyone say I couldn't stay. Um, and I don't know if anybody else, um, wants to like offer anything on, on wild camp. Oh, pe- people are chatting about warm showers in the chat. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about warm showers. Don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my first time I went touring, I, I was so worried about camping that we, because we were cycling to Amsterdam, we, we planned the route so that we got the overnight ferry, so we didn't even have to think about camping, and I we treated that as like our first day was, was on the ferry, so um, that was a little bit of cheating our way out of it. I really like Bar- Barry's comment as well, parks are fine and they have benches to cook on, and yeah, I think that's true, I've stayed... I've stayed in one park. I think I find it, um, I feel more worried about staying in a town because I feel more worried about um, uh, being disturbed or people asking me questions. Um, I don't know if that resonates with you at all, Inesh. Would you have you stayed in a town? I, I have. I, I have camped in a, in, a, in a park in a town. Um, and 
I, I, I think I had similar fears to you before, but, but, but I actually found the opposite. We really didn't get bothered at all. Um, and because we were just there one night, we were gone by morning. Um, mm -hmm. I actually felt really comfortable doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. More than and, I expected to. And so, um, and some of the questions that I've seen coming up in the chat has also been, what do you do with your bike um, when you're camping, um, while camping? What do you do if you need to have a number two? And um, which is a very valid question that I also got very worried about. Um, and um, I, and then we'll move on to talk about where to, what, warm showers and stuff. But so, what do you do with your bike? And are there any tips that people want to share in the chat? What do you do, Anesh? Um, I I just lock my bike up next to my tent and. And when I've camped in parks and other places have like, have been a bit worried about leaving my bike out, but, but, but kind of positioned my bike in between like a tree or a bench and my tent and been like, if anyone tries to take my bike, then I'll wake up because it's right next to my tent. Um, yeah. So that's that, what is that to how you've done. Yeah, I've also, I've got like a, um, I have actually taken a proper D lock on some cyclotors before, but um I don't, I don't, I've never actually felt it was really necessary to have it because the bike is like so kind of cumbersome and laded full anyway. It, it, it you know, it's not, it's not actually ended up being a worry, but what I have had is um, I switched to like a small kind of um, uh, like wire lock that just kind of stops, um, uh, stops opportunistic, like rolling it away. Um, and the other thing that I've done is also like loop the guy ropes or turn it, someone also said, turn it into part of your bivy. So essentially turn the bike into being something structural in your tent or your bivy so that someone can't just cycle it away. That's right, really helped me with that. Yeah. And then on the having um, having a number two question, I think it's a, um, uh, well, different, different, without going into too many details, but I think take, a, if you're worried about that, take a trowel oh. and make sure that if you go somewhere, you don't go near watercourses, all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the other, um, and moss, very good, um, uh, is uh, very, very antibacterial properties in moss as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and um, generally I try and essentially always have a coffee at 10 a.m. in a cafe. And then you're like supporting the local economy and you can have a little wash and you can go to the toilet and not feel worried about it. I appreciate you do have to be somewhere where um, where there is uh, cafes. But in terms of getting started, um, I think, you know, planning to need to use the bathroom in the morning is not um, uh, a, a bad idea. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of uh, one other one other thing, um, when, when before we quickly move on to um, what we were really excited about with cycle touring is, um, uh, were you worried about being fit enough or going up hills in Ash? Definitely. Um, yeah, I like I said, I, I had only really kind of cycled to school and, and and around to work and stuff. And I hadn't. I was very nervous about being fit enough and I was especially worried about being able to cycle up hills with panniers on my bike and like having like being fully laden with weight on the bike. Um, and yeah, I, I was kind of worried about not being able to, so like we'd plan these distances and we'd plan these routes and I'd, I was worried about not being able to cover them. Um, <clears throat> and, and what I would do if I like got to the end of the day and it was dark and I hadn't, and I hadn't gone as far as I thought I was gonna get and I, yeah, wasn't as fit as I thought. Um, that, that filled me with a bit of fear. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I can really relate to that. I think I was, I just had this idea that the and the 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 types of people who go cycle touring or go on bike holidays 
um, were, were really fit. Like I just had this like idea that it was something I wouldn't be able to do. How was I gonna go up the hill with all of my things? Um, and um, would I be able to, yeah. I, I had also booked a ferry in like a quite a short period of time. So I did have to do some quite big distances at the beginning. Um, to make sure I, I met the ferry so I suppose that's one thing I did learn the hard way was like um give if if give a little bit more time like if you book a ferry give if you can book yeah. it the day after you think you'll arrive and um, just to mean that if you're worried about your fitness you've planned in for the fact that you know um you'll probably get there and if you don't you've given yourself a little bit of time um uh, to but, me I, I always I am um, my my main thing with that was was I just started early I I kind of when I was when I was particularly worried about not being able to cover the distance not being fit enough um and especially if it was like a really hilly day or it was a really hilly route and I was worried about going up the hills was to start really early get up at sunrise and um enjoy it when the roads are a bit more empty and and start the day with like the first light um and making your way like getting I, I, that's one of the things I find most satisfying is like being able to cover a amount of distance before you get to a cafe and have your breakfast and your coffee and your morning poo. But, um, and I think that, that for me is the best way to kind of like alleviate some of those fears is, is just to start early and make sure you've definitely like got enough hours in the day. Cause it's very easy to kind of like be on holiday and roll out and have bed at 11 and have your coffee and have a nice start and be like oh it's such a sunny day I'll go for a bike ride uh and then get to get to sunset and you you haven't got anywhere near as thought as far as you thought um I like that totally agree up at sunrise done by three with a beer <laughs> yes. that's the best way to do it yeah I mean I I do really agree I think I also I would get into a rhythm where I would start to almost feel like a bit like kind of itchy if I hadn't like got up I actually quite like getting up packing up my stuff cycling somewhere doing an hour and then having like breakfast because then you're kind yeah. of on on the way I know that for some people especially if you're cycling with kids or something that that probably is highly inconvenient and you want to just like get everyone up have breakfast pack everything away and then leave so I suppose one thing is there's no uh, universal rhythm it's kind of trying it and, and find it, finding out what works for you um, but one of the things that I found um, uh, really great was that um, the first steep hill, really steep hill that I had to go up. I remember it was, um, I was going over the Wessex Downs and um, I was sort of just like riding along. And I remember looking up and then being like, oh my God, the sky's gone green because there's like this ridgeway that just appears. And then <laughs> and I like stopped, looked at the map, was like, is there any way I can get around this? You know, is there another route? How can I avoid that hill? That hill looks terrible. Um, and I really tried to like plan my way out of it, even though I hadn't planned my way into it by misreading the map. And then I just had to do it. And I think I stopped 14 times going up the hill, but I was like, it doesn't actually matter. No one, no one is here. It's just me and my bike and my panniers. Yeah. I made it up the hill and then enjoyed the view. <laughs> So um, I think that one thing that I've learned is that going up hills is fine. You just get there when you get there. Um, and uh, Totally. And, and especially when, when you're by yourself, um, that's, I find it a bit more intimidating if I'm with other people, but, but by yourself, going up hills is, is, you stop as much as you need to and you walk as much as you need to and you take it at your own pace um, and, and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, take it at your own pace. I totally agree with that. Um, so we've covered um, we've covered wild camping, but which is scary for us. Um, how we started overcoming the fear of mechanicals and punctures. How we started navigating. Whether we thought we were fit enough to do it. We haven't talked about warm showers actually, and some people have men mentioned that in the chat. And um, well, Debbie's just mentioned it as well. Um, and. Um, she said, um, RE warm showers, I think is about sending lots of message to people in the area you want to stay as people are busy. Um, and uh, yes, I agree. So warm showers, if, if people don't know about it, 
is essentially like couch surfing um or, or uh if you don't know about couch surfing that's not helpful but it's like couch surfing for um people specifically cycle touring so it's um there's an app you can download the app and a website and you sign yourself up and it's kind of just based on like if you stay somewhere offer for people to stay at, at your house if you can and when you can and the minimum you can offer is a warm shower but my experience of warm showers has been I've ended up staying like a week with some like amazing people where they fed me every day um, I've like really recovered from some bad weather there um, and you know it's far more than a warm shower it's an incredible way to meet um, what's uh, what's what's your favorite warm shower um, so my favourite warm shower that I've stayed in, um, I don't know if people want to also answer that question in the um, in the chat, but my favourite one was I stayed with this incredible couple in um, in the middle of France and um, their daughter was training to be a patisserie chef <laughs> and they let me stay for like four days and just fed me homemade pastries every day. <laughs> um, and uh yeah so one of the kind of techniques for warm showers is definitely i know that some people they they say what kind of notice is ideal for them um but my kind of approach to using it is um to look where i'm going to be going in the next few uh days and then um uh, essentially message a bunch of people in that area and see who says yes and try and give myself options um because um, as Debbie was saying in the chat, um, uh, you just kind of need to find out who's there and if you can stay there and, and message them in advance. Um, but yeah, if um, if you, um, yeah, Alan's also said, I think there's an issue with COVID and warm showers. And that's right. Um, we had someone ask us the other day if um, they could stay in um, our house in uh, warm showers and we decided not to because of COVID. So getting started this summer warm showers might be tricky but the other thing is is that it might also just mean that if you're worried about finding somewhere to camp and stuff like that um someone might just let you stay in their garden um or you know lock your bike up in their garage um while you go and explore a town or something so i think it's still worth checking out just to see who's who's doing what in the area that you're heading to um, okay, and there's, there's a quick question in the chat of someone says, please, can you talk a bit about returning to cycle touring after recovering from illness or injury? Um, I was wondering if you had any, if you've had any experience of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose how I would approach returning to cycle touring after illness or injury is, um, I think it would depend what the illness and injury was. Um, but in general, I think I would um, start small, start local um, and um, kind of uh, treat it as like give yourself options for if it doesn't work out. So maybe try cycle touring to somewhere where there's a train station where you can get home or like plan a small route where there's different um, points that you can stop and have good breaks. Um, I would... Um, uh, yeah, make it break it down into small kind of bite-sized chunks of like uh, what where you want to go, and maybe do some practice runs as well. Um, uh, because I can imagine um, cycle touring um, is a really great way to recover from um, an illness or injury because you can go at your own pace. Um, it's really good being active and having like a holiday where you're out and about and to build your fitness. And then one of the things that happens when you cycle tour is that um, you don't have to be fit to start it. And then at the end of a week's holiday of cycling, you know, you'll feel like a different person to how you did at the beginning of the week. Um, so, yeah, and I would also um, uh, plan, uh, plan in like, personally, this is what I would do personally, is plan in like luxury cycle touring. So like if I needed to like, have a B and B or something halfway through where I didn't want to camp. Like that's totally fine. That's like a great way to restart. Is to and I, I I would echo that point for like anyone starting. Like I I don't think you need to rough it. Like if if you're worried about wild camping, don't don't be harsh on yourself. If you want to book an air, if if you want to book a B and B, if you want to book a hotel room on, along the way if you want to find like a yeah warm showers rather than camping definitely do it and if that's going to make you um world camping isn't isn't the be all and end all if, if, if it means you go on an adventure with your bike and um 
you do the the way you do it um and I've had some great cycle tours when I've stayed in B&Bs along the way um and hostels as well um um, and so someone in the chat's also put Wells for uh, Wheels for Wellbeing is an organisation meant to be great for people helping uh, people get back on the road. There's also um, some an organisation called Wheels for All, and they also do great um, sessions. So if you're going back in uh, to cycling, um, you can um, regain your confidence um, often off road. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, that that's also a great organisation. Um, so I wanted to just touch on um, something that you mentioned um, uh, earlier in Ash of like, what were you excited about um, cycle touring? Um, like, why did you want to go? Like, what, you know, what's this, what's this all about? Um, yeah. And if in the chat, if you want to say, what are you excited about cycle touring? Why do you want to go? Yeah, I, I, for me, it was always about the adventure. Um, and it, it wasn't initially about the bike. It was a bike is a way to take me on a bigger adventure than I otherwise might be able to go on. Um, and I, I think I was really excited for kind of the satisfaction of being able to say I'd done it. Um, kind of almost more than anything of like proving to myself that I could just go on this adventure by myself and just me and my bike and get somewhere. Mm. Um, yeah. What about you? What, what were the like, what, what made you want to just start? One of the things that Kirsten's just said, um, see new places slow down. And I think that's uh, something that um, I was also like really longing for, I think is, um, getting out of like from behind a desk and moving and like using my body like I really really um, wanted to do that um, and wanted to um, find space like I find um, the uh, the the space that um, uh, I get when I'm cycle touring is like unlike any other um, like relaxation that I've ever had like there's something about also doing something, turning up, overcoming the challenges that will come um, come your way, because they, they definitely, um, there's definitely challenges. Um, I don't know, I just sleep so well and like have such a good time um, that, yeah, that, that I, I can't imagine going on holiday in other ways now, actually. <laughs> um, I think another thing about yeah. it is, is the like, um, kind of yeah putting yourself like a different frame of mind of like checking out of 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 day-to-day -day life of being in front of a computer and and seeing those people and being in towns all the time and and just kind of getting out and getting some space by yourself um I found yeah kind of it, it was more about kind of escaping some of the time mm -hmm. um, yeah um uh, so one, the last, in the last little bit, we wanted to cover uh, two things. One was like what we have, what we learned very quickly on Cycle Tours um, and uh, any resources that we found really helpful. And we've covered a few as we've gone along. But um, Inesh, I uh, just wanted to ask you that question. And in the chat as well. What have you learned very quickly on your cycle tours? We've got some people with experience here, like, and I, I, I just love this question. So what, what did you learn very quickly, Inesh? Definitely the fastest thing I learned was always carry zip ties. Always <laughs> carry zip ties. They can get you out of any trouble. Yep. And duct tape. And duct tape, duct tape definitely. <laughs> yes, yeah. you just said that, and duct tape. <laughs> yep. Um, um, don't forget to laugh at yourself like it's okay to make mistakes and, and have fun along the way I think oh don't pedal downhill save energy great tip um the one of the tips that I uh one of the things I learned very quickly um was that ill-fitting cycle shorts are very bad um <laughs> and um that was uh, essentially the worst saddle sore that I've ever had. And I kind of arrived at a bike shop 
and I, um, I couldn't speak the language that they were speaking and I was in a bit of pain and I just kind of pointed to my shorts and was like, do you have any others of these? Tried some on in the changing rooms and put them on and then never looked back. But I had borrowed a pair of cycle shorts that were too big. And um, I, yeah, Terry Shaw has said Vaseline, definitely. Um, Vaseline and um, uh, uh, don't use cycle shorts that are too big. <laughs> Um, there's, there's someone else has put in in um in the chat ride ride 10 miles and take a break and pace yourself and i i this is something i i remember from actually reading emily chapel's book of of when she was doing the transcontinental of like going up a big hill and being like i'm just just gonna ride 10 minutes and then stop and then another 10 minutes and then stop and another 10 minutes and then do what i need to do um and yeah that that's something you, you don't have to race yourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This um, on shorts, uh, use chamois, chamois cream um, and wash your shorts out every day. One of the things that I actually ended up doing was buying two pairs of shorts and then um, uh, switching between them. So I always wash them yep. every night to try and stop getting um, saddle sore. Um, uh, that was something else I learned very quickly was uh, all shops in France are closed at lunchtime. And on Sundays, when you're hungry. <laughs> and they're always closed when you want them to be open. <laughs> um, yeah, I also did learn that the hard way in France um, with things being closed on Sundays. Um, but the other thing that I learned when things were closed on Sundays was that I could just knock on someone's door and ask if they would refill my water bottle, and they did. Um, don't know if that would be the same in COVID times, but generally... Um, I don't think when I've asked someone if they could refill my water bottle, anyone has ever said no. Um, yeah, um, so that that's one thing. And something that people have said in the chat is that people are so, um, so kind. Um, yeah. And- uh, Carry plenty of snacks. That's what people have put. Loads. Take loads of snack bars. And the, um, having them accessible, so like setting up your like cycle, your, your sort of like kind of your, your, bar, your bar bag and everything so that you can just like eat as you go. That's also a really great idea. There's loads of great like snack pouches and stuff available now that you can get right and just have everything set up so you don't have to keep getting on and off and on and off. Snickers bars. Um, yes, great. Um, and uh another another thing that i learned very quickly was to carry a spare bag of bolts um for like have a look see what bolts are on your bike and then carry spare versions of those in a little pouch because um uh if unless you've like you regularly check them um which is a good idea just to like check them as you're going on your ride if you're on a long tour, multi-day tour or something, especially if it's rattly, a bit off-road, things will work loose. Um, and if they if they do and you haven't checked them, if you have a spare bag of bolts, that's great to sort of, you know, be able to fix something quickly. Um, but also check your, just tighten your bolts um, um, uh, at the end of the day, you know, do a little bike check. Um, that has uh, saved me from losing my pannier rack, actually. Um, <laughs> she would have been tricky. <laughs> My, I, I was on one tour last last year where my pannier rack snapped halfway up a hill. It just it just gave in and and bent in half. Um, and that's when cable ties came to the rescue. I cable tied <laughs> it back to my bike, um, and it stayed that way for six months after I got home until I got around to replacing it and fixing it. Um. um. Yeah. And the other thing that, one of the other things that I learned quite quickly was um, that getting a bike fit is a good idea in terms of one of the things that often stops a lot of people is do they have the right gear, do they have the right bike, all those kinds of questions. And actually for me, I think whether I have the right gear or the right bike is almost like um, the, the secondary thing to does the, do, do I have my bike set up right so I don't get um, injured um or like you know sore shoulders and stuff like that so if you can have a bike fit I think like that is actually better than investing in loads of fancy gear and all that kind of stuff just making sure the bike that you've got 
fits you as well as it can and um, that really and, and and that you're confident in it um something when I when I first started touring people looked at my bike and were like you're gonna go touring on that bike uh and I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> like takes me everywhere why can't it take me to Amsterdam uh but 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 I was confident in it and it was the bike I knew and it was the bike that fitted me and it was the bike I was comfortable on um and I think that's that's always the best you don't need to have a special bike um yeah fancy gear isn't necessary I think there's a chat there's a there's, there's a talk at the festival oh I'm not sure when it is maybe um someone's doing another talk at the cycle touring festival of of adapting any bike to be a cycle touring bike yeah. and I really recommend you guys will go along to that that sounds really great yeah 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 definitely um so the last few minutes we um uh thought it would be really great if there was some um any blogs or um, particular websites or books or, or Alan says that talks tomorrow morning. Um, so Great. go along to that. Um, uh, if there's any um, blogs, books, resources, um, community projects, anything like that, um, that you found really helpful, put them in the chat. Um, what are um, some of the blogs there's, that you found helpful in Ash? So the blogs I found helpful, um, when I there's one wonderful blog that when I when I decided to cycle to Paris, this guy called Donald Hirsch has has written this incredible website um, and has kind of found the perfect low traffic route from Dieppe to to Paris, and with so many anecdotes and like top tips along the way and like really excellent paper maps um, with all of the tips and that was one of the best things I've found. I'm just going to put a link in the chat. Um, I also really liked um, Tom Allen. Um, you, I don't know if he's on the program this year, but um, he's a regular um, uh, speaker and uh, really inspiring. Um, uh, last, I think last the year before last, we made a Tom's bike trip. Exactly, that's his blog. Um, we made a, a camp stove out of a, a Coke can, or doesn't have to be Coke, any kind of can. Um, and uh, yeah, he's got some really really great um uh uh tips and and work on how to uh, start cycle touring um and uh also emily chapel's blog um i found that really she like lays out the stuff that she takes and when she did her big cycle trip and um, that was um uh, one that i used a lot um when i first started as well um and another, another person who's really great, who um, does ultralight backpacking tips. And he's written a few kind of like um, cartoon type books. And it's for, uh, it's more for hiking rather than cycle touring, but it's just got some like really, really handy hints of like how to reduce weight, but without it costing loads of money. Um, and I'll put them in the chat. I've just, well. just put that in the chat. You put it in the chat, great. Um, uh, yeah, Laura's just said Adventure Cycle Touring Handbook is great. Um, R&D Bike Adventures YouTube. Maybe what we'll do is we'll take all of the chat and then we'll, we'll turn this into um, a, um, a, a resource that we can hand out, send the link around to, because um, there's so much amazing stuff that can help um, get going. Um, and uh, I was just looking at the stuff that we wrote down before. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share about things you'd used in Ash? I'm just having a think. Um, we'll, we'll send we'll send these suggestions. I promise, Eleanor. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll collect them. Susan has also just said Premier Inn let you take your bike into your room. Great, that's like that's very handy. Um. I, I think going back to back to your like local community bike project, like a lot of a lot of bike projects like Broken Spoke or London Bike Kitchen or um, the Peddler's Arms and Leeds, uh, Bike for Good in Glasgow, Bike Station. Yeah. Um, a lot, almost all of these, like, yeah, almost all of these bike projects have 
a really great community there of of people who are ready to give you these tips and like really want to help you get on your bike and go touring um so I think like if you haven't already definitely do try and discover your your local bike project um and there'll be plenty of people there with with all of the things that you might need Nikki's also just said cam strap for ferries or trains is useful hose your bike in place but staff can move it if needed see also hairbands to hold brakes on very yeah great tips wow great um so uh we've kind of got a minute left so we're gonna um take all the chat turn that into something that we can send out to everyone and um I, the last thing to say is that the amazing um thing about um the cycle touring festival is that all of this is going to be recorded um and so this is also a huge resource so thanks so much to laura and tim because in addition to all of the blogs and things that we've already mentioned here, there is, um, there's going to be this wealth of stuff that we can all look at whenever we want um, online. So thank you so much to Laura and Tim for um, uh, putting all the effort in to get this online. Really appreciate and, it. And, and thanks to all of you guys for turning up and, and joining in. Um, Are there any Q and A's that we've missed? There's a couple on, on kit recommendations, which we haven't really covered. Um, any quick answers we can check in? Um, Someone says, I would, I would worry about charging my phone to use for uh, worrying my, charging my phone along the way. Um, and something I've used actually is, is a solar powered battery pack. So you can get really, really great ones just to strap onto the back of your bike and charge your phone as you as you ride throughout the day. Um. Well, I think, um, oh, Laura, you've done a great job of answering some of the questions as well. Thank you. Um, I think that's our time. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for turning up. I hope this was useful and that um, the fears that you might have about getting started, at least some of them have been alleviated and you um, realise that you can do it. <laughs>